Hi, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how we use vector projections. So I'm gonna talk about what they mean and then what the definitions are, and then I'll go through an example. So there are two things we wanna know when we're using projections, and they give us two different types of projections using vectors. The main idea here is that we have one vector and we're projecting it onto another. So we wanna figure out first how much of a given vector is going in the same direction as another vector. Then the other thing we wanna do is take that value of how much a vector is going in the same direction as another and use that as the magnitude for a vector pointing in that direction of the other one. So we're gonna take a vector with the magnitude of our first example that points in the same direction as the other vector. Okay, so this is really general. Let's give some pictures and some variables so you can see what I'm talking about. Let's say we're given the vectors A and B. And for this first case, we call this the scalar projection of B onto A. We could do A onto B. I'm just focusing on this specific case here, just picking which vector we're putting onto the other one. So let's look at an acute angle between B and A, and we're gonna drop down a vertical line from B onto A, and we wanna know this length, so the length is created by the side of that triangle there. How much of B is pointing in the direction of A? So we also call this the component of B along A, and we denote it comp sub A of B. I'll try to just say component of B along A, the notation itself doesn't really mean anything on its own when I say it out loud. It's just what we use to denote it. So for the second type of projection we're going to do, let's look at this same image, but this time I'm looking at the vector with that length that we found for the component of B along A. So we just wanna take a vector that points in the direction of A, but has that specific length or magnitude. So we call this the vector projection of B onto A, and it's denoted proj sub A of B, the projection of B onto A is probably how I will say it without using that weird way of saying the notation. The way I make sense of this notation is that the sort of bigger letter, so the B in this case, would fall onto the smaller letter. So it's the projection of B onto A. Just one way you might remember which variable goes on which spot. So in order to be able to use these ideas of the scalar and vector projections, we're going to need formulas. So let's first talk about the component of B along A, which is the scalar projection of B onto A. So looking at my image, I can take theta as the angle between the vectors B and A, and then I can look at the lengths of the sides of the different parts of this triangle. So the component of B along A is my adjacent side. That's what I'm trying to find. And then the hypotenuse is just the magnitude of that B vector. So I can say that the cosine of theta is the adjacent over hypotenuse or the component of B along A divided by the magnitude of B. Then since I'm trying to find a formula for the component of B along A, I'm gonna solve for that by multiplying the magnitude of B over to the other side. Now, I like that I have a cosine here because we actually know how to use this cosine of theta with dot products. So the cosine of theta is equal to the dot product of A and B divided by the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. And I can use this to substitute in for cosine. So I'm getting that the component of B along A is equal to the magnitude of B times A dot B divided by the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. That's a lot of words, but it's okay, we're going for it. So now our magnitudes of B are going to cancel and I'm left with A dot B divided by the magnitude of A. And this is my formula for the component of B along A or the scalar projection of B onto A. And remember, this tells us how much of B is pointing in the direction of A. So this is just our way to understand what this quantity means. 
As a note, a dot b is a scalar value, and so is the magnitude of a. So this whole thing is just a number once we find it. It's just the amount of b that points in the direction of a. Now for the projection of b onto a, we already have the magnitude of this vector. It's the component of b along a. And so with magnitude, the only thing we now need to define the vector is the direction. So we have magnitude. Now we just need the direction. So the way we get a vector pointing in a specific direction is we take the unit vector pointing in the direction of a. So the unit vector would be the vector a divided by its magnitude. Then we can take this unit vector and multiply it by the scalar value for the magnitude. So we multiply it by the magnitude to then scale it out to the right amount that we need. Basically, we take that vector a, we shrink it down to be a unit vector, and then we multiply it by a given magnitude to get it out to the right length. So what this looks like is we have the unit vector, that's the vector a divided by its magnitude, and then our magnitude that we're using here is the component of b along a. It's a dot b divided by the magnitude of a, what we found in the previous part. Remember, this is the direction of the vector a times the magnitude. So we have a magnitude and a direction here. So together, I'm just going to multiply these things. I have the projection of b onto a is equal to the vector a times the quantity a dot b divided by the magnitude of a squared. So I'm combining those magnitudes of a together and the vector a, the one on the left hand side, is really the only vector quantity I have. Everything else is a scalar, and so I'm putting all those scalars together in the parentheses. And here, the projection of b onto a is the vector representing the part of b that points in the direction of a. All right, so let's try an example where we do both of these types of projections with some vectors. So we're going to find the scalar and vector projections of the vector 1, 4 onto the vector negative 3, 5. And I'm going to put our formulas here so that we have them to reference. So we're taking that first vector, I'm going to call it b, and projecting it onto a. So I'm just labeling it that way so that it matches up with my formulas. So looking at the formulas, I see that I'm needing lots of different quantities. I'm needing dot products and magnitudes. So I'm going to go ahead and compute those separately and then substitute them into the formulas. So I'm seeing that I need a dot b and I need the magnitude of a. So I'm going to find both of these values and then put them together into the formulas. You can pause now and find them on your own if you'd like. This would be a good time to do that. So I'm going to go ahead, the dot product of a and b is just the dot product of negative 3, 5 with 1, 4. So I'm doing negative 3 times 1, that's negative 3, plus 5 times 4, that's 20. And so I'm getting 17 as my dot product. Then I can find the magnitude of a, so I take the square root of the component squared, so it's the square root of negative 3 squared plus 5 squared. That gives me the square root of 9 plus 25, which is the square root of 34. Now I have all of the values I need in order to use both my formulas for each of the scalar and vector projections. So first, if we do the component of b along a, I'm going to take the dot product, that's 17, and divide it by the magnitude of a. That's the square root of 34. So 17 over the square root of 34 is actually a fine answer, but I know it's going to simplify since 17 is half of 34. So let's simplify it a little bit. I'm going to rationalize it by multiplying the numerator and denominator by square root of 34. So I'm getting 17 times the square root of 34 over 34. And then 17 over 34 is just 1 half 
So I'm getting square root of 34 over 2 as my solution. There are lots of ways to simplify it. I just like this one the best. Just to give you a little sense for what that value is, I typed it in my calculator and I got 2.9 approximately, but the exact solution would be that root 34 over 2 or even just that 17 over the square root of 34 that we found right away. They're all the same. Now I can find the projection of B onto A. So I'm gonna take the vector A, that's negative three, five, and then multiply it by the quantity that is the dot product, 17, divided by the magnitude squared. So that's the square root of 34 squared. Simplifying, I see that I'm multiplying my vector by 17 over 34, and 17 over 34 is 1 half. So I can just distribute that 1 half into each of my components of my vector, and I'm getting negative 3 halves and 5 halves as my vector for the projection of B onto A. Cool, so let's graph this really quick, just to make sure that we believe what I did, and to put a little bit of visual to this math. So here are the values that I just found as part of the problem, and let's graph A and B here. So A is negative 3, 5, B is 1, 4. So if I graph my projection of B onto A, I'm going over negative 1.5 up 2.5, that's my negative 3 halves and my 5 halves, and I have this vector that points in the same direction of A, so that's good. And you can see that if I drop the sort of vertical line from B onto A, I'm getting the right location. So I have the right magnitude for that projection. Okay, so that gives me some confidence that I did it right. And those are my solutions for both the scalar and the vector projections of my vector 1, 4 onto the vector negative 3, 5. Okay, that's an introduction into vector projections and how we can find them. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.